What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for KRS One slash Boogie Down Productions, and today I'm back with another story. Today's story is part of my series called Epic Fails When Hip Hop Goes Wrong. Now, today's story is part of an ongoing discussion I've been having with you guys about live performances and how sometimes things could go haywire. Let me give you all a little history. As I've mentioned before, I started DJing for Boogie Down Productions towards the end of 1989, and I DJed consistently all the way into the early 2000s, and then after that, sporadically. I have done well over a thousand shows with Boogie Down Productions and KRS-One. In probably 99% of those shows, KRS-One was the headliner or went last. Most of the time, it was either because KRS-One was the biggest act on the bill or sometimes there was a co-headliner situation where usually the promoter would ask KRS-One to go last or sometimes the artist would ask KRS-One to go last. As a matter of fact, I've seen with my own two eyes artists beg KRS-One to go on after them. And I'm not talking about small artists either. I'm talking about platinum selling artists. I'm talking about artists who've had platinum singles. Now, it's very rare in rap for an artist to have a platinum anything. But to have a platinum single is super rare. I've seen on more than five occasions, artists with platinum singles, literally with their hands like this, begging Karis One to go last. Due to Karis One's extensive catalog of hit records, his many years in the music business, and his stage presence, frankly, it's very difficult for most groups in hip hop to go on after him. Yo, look, you do, that is a rule that's been circling for 35 years. No artist, I don't give a fuck who it is, even the new artists of today, you do not go after this man. As a matter of fact, there was once a platinum group, a household name in rap music, who almost came to blows with the members of Boogie Down Productions because they didn't want to go on last. This group's manager, who we had known for years, was ready to fight with BDP member Willie D in the dressing room over Karis One going on after them. It became that serious. Every once in a while, we'd have a show with an act that's even bigger than Karis One, where obviously they would be the headliners. For example, we opened up for the Beastie Boys. LL Cool J would be in that conversation. Public Enemy. But like I said, for the most part, in the 15, 16 years that I was DJing, this would be very rare. But that being said, We've had to go on after some incredibly dope hip-hop acts. We had to go on after Naughty by Nature and A Young Tretch when OPP was the number one song in the land. And he threw that on and ripped this stadium down and rewind the record back and did new lyrics. It was crazy. We had to go on after that. And we killed it. There was a time we had to go on after DOS Effects when They Want Effects first came out. That record was so hot that before DOS Effects performed the song, I saw them ask the crowd, yo, when we drop this record, y'all got to calm down. Never in my life have I seen a group ask a crowd not to get hyped but calm down when they throw on their hit record. Sure enough, when they dropped They Want Effects, the place went crazy. BDP had to go on after that. We killed it. We had to go on after Redman, a dope performer, 
when Muddy Waters was at its peak. We had to go on after Notorious B.I.G. when Ready to Die was at its peak. Up next, BDP. We killed it. Sometimes we were on a bill with a bunch of dope groups and everybody was on their A game and everything was right there to see who had the hottest performance. Sometimes it was right there, but BDP was always right there in the mix. There was only a couple of times that I can confidently say that another group killed it so bad that afterwards, even Karis One and BDP could not get the crowd as hype as they had it. Let's get into it. One night in 1992, there was a huge hip hop concert at the legendary Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. What I clearly remember about this show was that it was around summertime and the AC in the Apollo Theater for some reason wasn't working. The temperature was about 110 degrees in there. You could barely even breathe. On the bill were several dope hip-hop groups with Boogie Down Productions scheduled to go last. The group that was going on right before us was none other than a tribe called Quest. Me being the hip-hop fan that I am, I usually sit and watch all of the performances before we go on. And of course, being a gigantic Native Tongue fan, I couldn't wait to see my boys, A Tribe Called Quest, get down in the Apollo. So the Tribe Called Quest did their show. They killed it as usual. Right towards the end of their performance, all of a sudden, all the lights went out in the Apollo. It was pitch black. The next thing you hear was a familiar voice doing an acapella intro. Present the fabulous What's the Scenario remix. Wait a minute. That sounds like the intro to the scenario remix. What's going on? Keep in mind, it's still pitch black, no music, just the acapella. Then you hear the acapella sound of the late great MC Hood doing his part on the scenario remix. All of a sudden, three things happened at once. The lights in Apollo came on, the scenario remix beat dropped, and Fife starts rapping. Amazingly, there's actually some grainy footage of this whole show on YouTube. Simultaneously, as Fife is rapping, now you see on stage not only the members of A Tribe Called Quest, but also the members of Leaders of the New School. Surprise! Fife is doing his verse. Everybody's running around on stage. C. Boogie Brown is bouncing around like a jumping bean on stage. Everybody in the Apollo went crazy. I'm up in the balcony on the side of the stage watching this whole thing go down, and I'm going crazy like, woo! Now, for those of you that don't know, The Apollo Theater has three levels. It holds about 1,500 people, and each of the three levels has about 500 people on each level. When Charlie Brown said, make it move, y'all, on and on and on, check it, check it out, to the break of break of dawn, you could practically see the balcony shaking is how hard people were going crazy in this building. Just when you didn't think it could get any crazier. This lunatic, madman, named Buster Rhymes, comes out and goes, What we gonna do in 92, even though we had fun in 91. And if any of y'all out there ever seen Buster Rhymes perform, y'all know he is an animal. When he started doing his verse, trust me when I tell you, if you have never believed anyone on YouTube in your life, believe me right now. I have never seen the Apollo Theater go so crazy as when Busta Rhymes did his verse. 
I thought they were going to rip the chairs out of the Apollo Theater. What you can't see in the video is the whole crowd. You can only see this little piece of the front row. Believe me, the whole place was jumping to the ceiling. After that, the Tribe Called Quest show was over. They leave the stage. And the announcer goes, up next, Boogie Down Productions. And in my mind, I'm thinking, there is no way on earth that this place can get any crazier than they just got for the Scenario Remix. It's over. This was the highlight of the night. Needless to say, Boogie Down Productions went on after a Tribe Called Quest and the Scenario Remix. We rocked the crowd, but it was nowhere near what Scenario did. Shout out to a Tribe Called Quest. Shout out to leaders of the new school. On that night, BDP took the L. Fast forward to a few years later, and once again, the scene was New York City, and the venue was the Paramount Theater in the world-famous Madison Square Garden. The Mecca. On this night, New York City radio station Hot 97 threw what they called an old-school jam. A bunch of the classic groups from the late 80s and early 90s were on the bill, including KRS-One. Now, despite a bunch of dope groups being on this bill, KRS-One had one advantage over everybody else on the bill. We happened to have a recent hit record that was playing on the radio at the time called MCs Act Like They Don't Know. No other group on the bill had had a hit record in years. So, of course, we had the advantage. When our time came to perform, we hit that sold-out stage in Madison Square Garden, and we tore that place to the ground. Believe me when I tell you, we bodied Madison Square Garden. After our performance, there was only a couple of groups scheduled to go on after us, and I was confident that BDP had the trophy that night. Another group went on. They were dope, but they didn't kill it like we killed it. Finally, at the end of the night, there was one group left to perform. The iconic Run DMC. Now, I hadn't seen Run DMC perform in many years, so I was anxious to see what they were going to do. Run DMC comes out, and they come to the front of the stage. Run says to the crowd, Yo, we've been performing at Madison Square Garden since 1985. And everybody said, Oh. And he said, When we came to the entrance to come into the garden, They didn't want to let us in. They said they didn't know who we were. And the crowd said, ooh. So I'm looking at this like they didn't know who they were. Run turns to DMC and says, yo, D, tell them who you are. DMC says, I'm the king of rock. There is none higher. Sucker MC to call me higher. When that beat dropped, it was over. I knew right at that moment that BDP took the L. There was the trophy sailing away. Look at it go. Run DMC proceeded to crush everything moving in Madison Square Garden. They dropped hit after hit after hit. And when Down With The Kings came on, y'all don't even understand the pandemonium. You know, as a fan and student of hip hop, 
it is my honor to take the L from Run DMC. If you're going down to anybody on a live show, why not them? <laughs> shout out to Rev Run. Shout out to DMC. Shout out to the late, great Jam Master J. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed Epic Fails Part 3, When Hip Hop Goes Wrong. Uh, if you haven't picked up the book, pick up the book. My brother's name is Kenny. I got a lot more stories in here, including the true origin of KRS-One and BDP. I'll put the link in the description below. And that's it. I'm out of here.